For the past year, or maybe even a year and a half, I've been using an audio tool to help improve the quality of the audio in my videos in a way that kind of almost feels like cheating. So if you remember those old shows that were like revealing the magician's secrets, I will reveal this secret to you and then hopefully you can use it in your videos. And basically what I'm able to do is take my audio from sounding like this to sounding like this with just a couple clicks of a few buttons and a couple adjustments of a few sliders. So I'd like to slide right into explaining how to do that. And the tool I'm using right here is Adobe Enhance Speech. So I Googled Adobe Enhance Speech. If I click on that, you can then see this window and that's where you can log in if you have an Adobe account. But I do wanna share a quick caveat with you. There is a free version of this, which gives you some limited functionality. If you wanna try it out, you can get some decent results with that. If you already have an Adobe Creative Cloud account, you should already have access to this included as part of that. So that's what I was doing because I already have an Adobe account, I already have to use the Adobe apps, and this is already there, so I'm gonna use this tool. If you do not have an Adobe account, if you do not have any of Adobe's subscription plans or anything, don't sign up for them to get this. Just don't, don't do it because uh, their subscription stuff is the worst. And I would much rather adjust my audio the old school way manually than deal with Adobe subscription plans just for this. But if you already have an Adobe subscription, you might as well use a really cool tool that is included with it. And so at the start of this video, you were listening to me on my boom mic, which is a Sennheiser MKH-50, and it's boomed out of frame beyond arm's length away, so about a meter away from me. This is what it sounds like without any processing, just straight into the camera. It is a good microphone, so it's always going to sound good, but this environment, even though it's kind of sound treated, you can hear some reflections and some reverb. You can kind of hear the sound waves bouncing around. When I add Adobe Enhanced Speech, now it sounds like this, which sounds much more like I'm using, you know, a really close up lavalier microphone, even though the mic is out of frame, I can't even reach it with my hand right now. Similarly, right now I'm using the Rode Wireless Micro, which is pinned to my shirt. And this is a lavalier microphone that I like, but its default sound, I think, does kind of pick up too many reflections. It almost sounds a little too airy for me. And so by adding Adobe Enhanced Speech, now I have what I feel is a really good, really solid sound to this microphone. It doesn't just remove background things, but it kind of enhances things, even out your levels a little bit. It, it works some, some very decent magic, and I'll show you how to do that. So my normal workflow is I'll record a video, and then when I have everything in Final Cut, before I start actually editing, I just export an audio-only version of that project, and then I upload that audio here to Adobe Enhanced Speech. You can see I have audio from the Obsbot Tale 2 review I recently did, and that is the last thing that I was working on before this video. Now, the reason I do that is because then I can take the processed audio, put that into Final Cut, and now as I'm going through and I'm editing my project, I'm working with the high quality audio right from the beginning. You could put a project together, edit it all, and then export the audio from that project, and then add that in, Sometimes though, I have found that, that I make mistakes. If I, have, if I start layering in music and sound effects and just only selecting the voice, I kind of make mistakes and I sort of process the wrong audio or I leave out audio. And then also, if you do wanna go back in your edit and you're only working with that audio that's already been cut, if you wanna go back and like add something in, you're not gonna have processed audio to work with. You're gonna to have to redo it. So by just processing all of your audio all at once, you then have all the audio to work with if you want to cut stuff out and then add it back in later. It's all going to sound the same. It's all going to sound consistent. And speaking of consistency, you do get the best results if you are in a consistent controlled environment. I think the original application for enhanced speech was to save like destroyed audio. So if you have terrible audio and you don't know what to do, it can save that and it can make it usable and that's like a really good tool for that but I'm not trying to do that. I think my audio sounds decent without any processing. What I'm trying to do is just make it, you know, take it from a B plus to an A plus kind of situation. And that's, it's just sort of like a fine tuning that really sort of puts it over the top in a way that I think sounds really, really good. So the interface is incredibly simple. It takes a bit of time to upload your project and then process it. And then once it's done, you have this where you can flip between the original and the enhanced audio. These are the current default settings that enhanced speech gives you. So speech and background, this basically means how much isolation is there on the actual dialogue or the speech and how much background noise is left. So it's, it's almost like two sides of the same coin, but this just gives you a little more nuance than just one slider for everything. 
I have found though that doing it this way by their defaults is way too much. I've talked about this before in other videos, but you don't want unnatural isolation. Right now, I'm in a space that the sound waves are reflecting. If I do what I'm doing right now and totally isolate the voice in the background as much as possible, this sounds a bit unnatural and I think kind of unpleasant. Probably won't want to listen to this for a super long period of time. If I actually add in a little bit of that, usually I find my speech kind of goes somewhere around, you know, the 60-ish and the 40-ish, usually something like this. One's usually a little bit higher than the other. I kind of flip these around right in the middle. And that is what I have found gives me a really natural sound where the voice is the most prominent thing that you're hearing, background's not distracting, but it doesn't sound like I'm in an anechoic chamber. That's how you pronounce that. It doesn't sound like I'm in a room where sound waves just die everywhere and it's kind of unnatural. It fits the environment that I'm in. And that's just something to keep in mind as you're working with this and isolating your audio. You do want your audio to fit in naturally with your environment. You don't want it to sound unnaturally isolated, which can be something people are tempted to do when they see this and they just max out the sliders. They're like, cool, I got the most isolated audio in the world and then it still kind of sounds weird. Once you have things dialed in the way you want, you can just download it and then add it to your project. And again, I like to do this before I've edited everything, so I just have to drag the audio right in and then I know everything is synced up. Now, there are other tools that do this. Even Final Cut Pro has a voice isolation feature. I know DaVinci Resolve added one, obviously Adobe stuff. Pretty much every editing application has some kind of noise reduction feature and they work pretty well. I have just found that I get the best and most consistent results from this workflow. And so in the past, my workflow was to take my raw audio or my radio, as the kids say, and put it into my editing software and then play with compressors and limiters and equalizers and get it to sound the way that I want. I could totally do that, but it just took a little bit more time and I couldn't get as consistent results as I wanted as I've been able to get with this. And this is just so much quicker <laughs> and so much easier that it just kind of works in a way that does sort of feel like cheating. I would encourage you to still take time and know what you're doing when you're processing your audio. So I think there is a difference between playing with something like a compressor and an equalizer and a limiter and understanding what those things do and then choosing to use a tool like this versus just using a tool like this and you know crossing your fingers and hoping for the best but not really understanding what makes good audio good audio to begin with. And like I said, the original application for this application was to save kind of terrible sounding audio. So if you are in situations where, you know, you realize maybe a microphone wasn't plugged in all the way and you use the camera's internal mic on something that you can't redo and you're sort of, you know, you're trying to fix terrible sounding audio or distractingly loud audio, this can kind of work some magic. So just as kind of a ridiculous test of this, this is my phone. I think I'm, I don't know, 15 feet away from my phone about, and I'm outside, and this is just the built-in microphone on the phone. This is what that sounds like, adding some enhanced speech stuff. This is what it sounds like as I've enhanced the speech. So not perfect, but you can definitely take unusable audio like this, which sounds very unpleasant. You hear the cicadas. And then you can make it sound like this, which again, not absolutely perfect, but definitely much more usable. Something I've also done in here a few times is I've processed audio, exported it, uploaded the processed version, and then reprocessed it. it I kind of like, you can kind of add layers and layers and layers. It can start to sound unnatural and over-processed, so you know, a light touch is always best, but it is a really helpful tool. And there are obviously other tools out there that can help process your audio and do similar things, but I have found this one to be the easiest and the most consistent, but if you do wanna dive into learning how to do that on your own in any editing application, I do have a video that's three simple steps to help your audio sound its absolute best.